Hi folks and good evening. Welcome to the Cobb TV studios this evening for a live streaming event about Cobb Cares, a guide to rental and mortgage assistance programs available in Cobb County through the Federal CARES Act. I'm Ross Cavett. We have a lot of people here tonight that are going to help answer some of the questions about these programs. Earlier this year, the county got a $132 million uh, infusion from the federal government as part of that CARES Act to mitigate the problems caused by the pandemic. And that money has been spread out in a bunch of different programs. We've helped small businesses, not-for-profits, and others in Cobb County as well. And here we're here tonight to talk about those who are facing rental and mortgage assistance and how those folks in Cobb County can get grants and assistance to uh, help, uh, help themselves get through this pandemic. Uh, we've got some ways that you can communicate with us this evening during this live streaming event. If you have a question, there's the email you can use. It's cares at cobcommunications.org. We also have our Facebook and YouTube channels up as well. You can chat on that and ask questions. Those will be relayed here to the studio, and we will try to get those questions answered for you. For, for you thanks to all of our experts here. In the studio with me this evening, uh, at my far left, we're all trying to stay socially distanced, is Dr. Jackie McMorris. She's the county manager for Cobb County. Uh, we'll get a welcome from her in just a second. Margie Stagmeyer is in the middle there. She's with a, a group called Star C. Uh, she'll explain that and how that can assist folks. And immediately to my left is Ernest Davis. He's with Cobb Home Saver, the infamous website now, cobhomesaver.org. Uh, that's been up for about a month now with some assistance programs as well. But let's start off with getting a warm welcome this evening from our county manager, Dr. McMorris. Hi, Doc. Hi, how are you? Thank you, Ross. I, I, first of all, I want to thank everybody uh, on the Cobb County team who is out there throughout the county at remote locations doing this simulcast. So thank you for giving up a little bit of time tonight so that we can uh, share information about these programs with our residents. So welcome. Um, and thank you for being a part of this program. Second, I would just like to also thank our guests for, for taking time this evening to be here to share information about both of their programs respectively so that we can answer your questions, we can tell you about the programs, tell you how to apply, actually even walk you through the application process and give you information about how we can assist you. I'd also like to thank the Board of Commissioners for approving both of these programs uh, as a part of uh, assistance for folk who are out there in need as a result of this pandemic. So. I bring you welcomes from the, welcome from the Board of Commissioners, um, our staff, and again, thank you guys for being here tonight. I appreciate you giving up your time to explain to people what it is you do and how you can help them. Thank you, Dr. McMorris. That's our goal tonight is to explain these programs, show who is eligible, and then show how to apply for that grant money uh, that is available. Now, you may have heard that there is a uh, prohibition, a stop on evictions. Uh, not just in Cobb County or the state of Georgia, but nationwide. And we're concerned some people may use that to maybe pass up on this grant money. Well, to explain where we stand with the evictions process and what lies ahead, our uh, Chief Magistrate for Cobb County, Judge Brendan Murphy, is here. Judge, I'm going to share my microphone with you so you can kind of give us some uh, words of wisdom about evictions. Thank you, Ross, and good evening, everybody. My name is Brendan Murphy, and I'm the Chief Magistrate Judge here in Cobb County. And I bring you greetings on behalf of the Magistrate Court. As Ross indicated, the CDC order that came down, uh, published as of September 4th, significantly changed the landscape of eviction cases across the nation and here in Cobb County. I'd like to quickly run down some key information for tenants, for landlords, and then for uh, both groups, for everybody. Number one, who's covered by the CDC order? Only eviction cases concerning non-payment of rent are covered by the CDC order. There are five requirements that a tenant must meet in order for that CDC order to protect them from eviction. Number one, and first and foremost, is that the tenant must be using best efforts to obtain government assistance in order to pay their rent or mortgage. What a wonderful opportunity tonight to learn more about two fantastic programs that Cobb County has funded that will help uh, landlords with their business and tenants to remain in their home, and that will help tenants qualify for this CDC order protection. Each adult on the lease must provide a copy of a written declaration saying that the CDC order applies to that tenant directly to the landlord. 
uh, the form will be available on our website. It's also available on the CDC website. There are federal criminal penalties if an individual were to have a false swearing on that form. So double check your form, make sure everything is accurate. A couple of key points. The law requires that tenants still pay rent. Rent, late fees, penalties, and interest are still accruing during this temporary CDC moratorium. Tenants must follow all uh, terms of their lease and any rules that the property has. Finally, evictions, even if protection is in place from this CDC order, evictions can resume on December 31st. You have to watch carefully and please do seek assistance because that can start sooner. If there's already a challenge at the federal court and if a federal court puts a stay on the CDC order or if Congress meets and modifies the order, hearings on payment cases could resume immediately. Some key information for landlords. Not all evictions have stopped. Any commercial eviction hearings are ongoing and being scheduled as normal. Cases that don't concern payment of rent, that would be tenants holding over, property damage, criminal activity, or lease violations. Those cases, as long as non-payment of rent is not checked on the affidavit, those cases are proceeding and being scheduled as normal. If you do have a case concerning non-payment of rent, that case is not being automatically set for a hearing as normal. If a landlord has not received the required CDC declaration from their tenant, they can file a request for the court and the court will consider setting a hearing if reason shown. That request form will also be available on the magistrate court's website. Please note, the CDC order does not have any deadline by which the tenant must provide the form. So even if the magistrate court issues a writ of possession if the tenant subsequently provides a written declaration to the landlord the eviction must immediately stop whether the court has issued a writ of possession or not failure to stop the eviction could result in federal criminal penalties for the landlord finally in closing key information for everybody it's the law is changing and it can be confusing and so if you get a notice from the court please act tenants if you get a notice of a new eviction action, you must answer within seven days as the law requires. Tenants and landlords, if you get a court date notice that says come to court, you must appear in court even if the declaration has been provided. You'll be able to tell the judge in court that the declaration has been provided. If you have any questions about your case, please call the magistrate court. Our phone number is 770-528-7770. 8900. There's also an email address available on Cobb County Magistrate Court's website. Our clerks will help give you information about the status of your case, but they can't give you legal advice. If you need legal advice, there are two organizations that you could call. Number one would be Cobb Legal Aid, and they can be reached at 770-528-2565. That's 770-528-2565 or the Cobb Bar Loyal Lawyer uh, Referral Service, which can be reached at 770-424-2947, 770-424-2947. Dr. McMorris, Margie, Ernest, thank you again for all your work in this space to help uh, landlords continue their business and our tenants to remain in their homes. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Judge. And the, uh, the key phrase I heard from that was tenants must still pay rent. So uh, as we're here tonight, keep that in mind uh, and it, again if you have any questions during all this cares at cobcommunications.org is the email address to use send those to us I already have a couple pages full uh, from people sending in questions prior to the start of this program this evening so we've got some already locked and loaded but if you have any as we go on tonight please feel free to contact us if you're at one of the remote locations you could just talk to uh, somebody with the county that's there they will relay those questions to us here in the studio now let's go to our guest we'll start with margie stagmeyer now margie i think we have your presentation all locked and loaded here for you you're with a group called star c tell us what that is and what you do so star c is a affordable housing model we work with apartment communities to help reduce transiency in the local school system. So we're an education model with an affordable housing solution. All right, so um, I guess you can get into your presentation now to tell people about the program that we now have in place thanks to the CARES Act and how they can get involved with it. Okay, thank you. So can we go ahead and start the program? Sure. Okay. Uh, go, go back one. All right. 
So as I mentioned, um, and thank you very much for inviting us here, and we're very appreciative to the Ca Cobb County Commissioners for giving us this $1.5 million grant to help apartment renters stay in their home and help them keep their children in the school system. So as I mentioned earlier, Star C, we are working with landlords and tenants to avoid eviction and reduce transiency in the local school system. So basically, we're a 501c3. Um, our programs include free after-school programs and summer camps in apartment communities. Um, we do wellness. We partner with the local federally qualified health clinic. So all the families living in our apartment communities have access to affordable health care. We do gardening and food security. And then, of course, now we have an eviction relief fund. So this is just an example of some of our programs. All right. So basically, our, let's get to our eviction relief fund. Um, we started it actually in the summer of 2019, and we officially launched the eviction relief fund in April 2020. Um, basically, the Cobb money that we have received assists with families that have a COVID hardship, but we also have been providing assistance for families that do not have a COVID hardship, um, pending the available funding. I think we've helped about 20 families in Cobb so far who did not have a car COVID hardship meet their um, rent requirements with their landlord. To date, we've raised 2.8 million, of which 1.5 was um, given to us by Cobb. Very appreciative. Um, our funding partners have been Cobb County, United Way of Greater Atlanta, um, DeKalb County, private foundations and individual donors. And we currently have 160 landlords in our program representing 33,000 apartments. All right, so this is how you qualify. So basically, we, our property qualification, this is a landlord-driven program, meaning you have to be in an apartment community where the landlord qualifies. The way the landlord qualifies is if they're near a low-performing school. There's 19 in Cobb counties. Um, you can go to our website, and we have a list of landlords that have already pre-qualified, or you can go to your landlord and ask them to sign up for the program. Once a landlord signed into the program, they can um, nominate any tenant. If they have 100 units that have not paid rent, that landlord can nominate and apply with 100 tenants. So it's like I said, it's landlord driven. Basically, your rent has to be less than $1,654 a month. And like I said, you need to be located near a high needs school. There's 164 apartment communities that are located near high needs schools. For the tenant to qualify, um, the way it works is we will pay up to 60% of your past due rent not to exceed $4,850. Um, that's if you have a COVID hardship. If you're in Cobb and do not have a COVID hardship, then we'll fund up to 40% of your rent for a maximum of $1,500. We also have a program where we work with extended stays. So if you are in an extended stay and want to move to an apartment, you have to qualify on your own and then apply. We will pay the first month's rent and the security deposit up to $3,000. So we will go up to $1,500 in your uh, of the first month's rent, and then $1,500 as a security deposit. We are getting more and more applications every day from families that want to transition from extended stay into apartment communities. So how does it work? So as I mentioned, landlord has to get pre-qualified. Um, basically, the landlord then markets to tenants who have a delinquent balance, or you can go to your landlord if you do have a delinquent balance. Um, basically, the landlord has to agree to waive the um, late fee or any type of fees that are associated with the, the delinquency. The landlord then submits the tenant application with proof of hardship. You have to provide a proof of hardship and a ledger to our website. Um, the landlord has to agree to pay 10% of the outstanding rent. Um, the tenant pays between 20 and 50% and any amounts exceeding the cap or for other time periods must neg be negotiated with the tenant and landlord. And I'm going to get into an example here in just a moment. And then we pay directly to your landlord. So basically, we don't make any checks out to tenants. We pay directly to the landlords. Um, any applications received by a Thursday are processed the following Monday and funded typically by Wednesday or Thursday. So today is Monday. We actually reviewed applications. Um, I think we approved about 75 applications in Cobb for roughly $145,000. So those landlords will be paid on uh, Wednesday. We'll cut checks. So here's an example. Let's say that you have a COVID hardship and you owe August and September rent and your rent is $1,000 a month. And you have $100 in um, court costs and another uh, $150, I'm sorry, $100 in late fees and $150 in court, 
cost. Step number one, go to our website and see if your landlord is qualified. All right, if not, ask your landlord to please try to get qualified. Step two, you need to download the application, which is on our website. Step three, you need to fill out the application and attach your written proof of hardship, COVID hardship. Then you give the completed application to your landlord, the land, or your landlord or your property manager. If the property manager approves the application, they must agree to waive all late fees, court costs, and cancel any eviction proceedings. So let's say for September and or August and September, you owe $2,000. Basically, with a, um, you owe $2,250. So basically, the landlord is going to apply for $2,000 in, in eviction relief. You have to pay your share of the rent. So you would have to pay 20% of the $2,000. That's $400. The manager or your landlord would have to waive their 10%, which is $200. And then the manager will sign your application and submit the application with the proof of hardship to our website. And then basically we review it and if we approve it, we cut the check. So this is how, where we are as of last Friday. Um, we have given a total of 305 grants in um, Cobb County, I'm sorry, yeah, 305 grants um, to families housing to uh, 410 children um, we've given a total of 631 grants to family of 844 children and then today we approved another 175 grants um, like i said the majority of them were in cobb county so we've been very active in the last couple weeks and then these are the landlords that have registered in cobb county that are already approved so if you live in one of these apartment communities all you need to do is go to your property manager and submit an application. Um, if you go to our website, this is listed, and um, we are signing up properties every day. So I think we had three applications today from properties in Cobb. So we do have a lot of Cobb landlords that are starting to register. So, and basically that's it. So Margie, uh, we've got a bunch of questions here and, and I'll, I'll get to most of them after Ernest does his thing here, but just real quick, you already mentioned this is a landlord driven program and we've mm -hmm. received a lot of calls here from people who say, my landlord's not on the program. What, what do you advise those people to do? Basically, then you call 211 and you get with the United Way or you call Ernst if you're in a home or if you rent a home. We've gotten a lot of calls from home renters um, about a third of the families in Cobb live in apartment communities and the rest live in either they own their home or they rent a home. But basically we refer them to other resources if the landlords are not qualifying or not w working with us. Right. And once you get that process going, if your landlord does buy into it or is already registered in the program, then it's, then it's the money goes directly to them. It flows to the landlord. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ernest Davis is with me here on the immediate left. He's with Cobb Home Saver. Uh, and that's a program that now has two different prongs to it, if I'm correct, uh, Ernest. Uh, why don't you explain what that is? Uh, you wanted to come up here and kind of demonstrate as well. Feel free to do that. Uh, tell us a little bit about Cobb Home Saver. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ron. Sure. So Cobb Home Saver actually launched about a month ago. Um, the home ownership piece of it. And basically this program is for if you own a home and you, you reside obviously in Cobb County and you're having a challenge paying your mortgage, you've been negatively impacted, financially impacted by COVID-19 and you have a valid COVID-19 hardship, then you can qualify. Now the piece that was recently launched and added to this program a week ago, thanks to the commissioners for adding this component, is the rental side of it for those who are renting a home if you're renting a home or renting an apartment, you can also qualify as well too. So the goal of this was to kind of really streamline the process. So I think the best way to kind of take everyone through many of the most commonly asked questions and the eligibility criteria is to let's just go directly to the website and then we'll kind of walk through what this side is. So if you are a homeowner, you will go to CobbHomeSaver.org and you will click homeowners. Now what the program is once again, the homeownership portion of this $4.8 million was allocated for homeowners. And, and so let's talk about what, how this program works. So again, you can get up to $4,800 in mortgage payment assistance, and you can also get 
homeownership counseling. Now, the homeownership counseling is being uh, uh, facilitated by Home Free USA, as well as the whole entire program is being administered by Home Free USA, which is a certified HUD approved nonprofit that um, uh, really has been doing this for over 20 years. So, the reason why the homeownership counseling portion is so critically important to this is that what we found out in 2008 and 2009 that there were a wave of foreclosures that obviously happened after the collapse. And a study was done by HUD that found out that approximately 40% of homes could have been saved if those homeowners had gone through some type of certified homeownership counseling. So what the homeownership counseling portion does is that it engages an organization to really work on the homeowner's behalf as an intermediary between you and your lender. So what this means is, is that some loans and the way they're created allows you to be able to tack this on to the end of your loan. Some loans may qualify for a loan modification, which could be a reduction in principal and or a reduction in your interest rate. But oftentimes you as the homeowner will not know what your options are unless you have someone who's working on your behalf with your lender. So the homeownership counseling piece is so critically important because while we understand $4,800 is not a lot of money, uh, it is a lot to really help people to help them get over this, this hump. But let's say you owe more than $4,800 and you're in a forbearance program. And, and the thing that I have to explain to people about the forbearance program is it doesn't mean you don't own, that you don't still owe the money. The forbearance program that some lenders are doing means that you simply have a temporary pause on your payments. So what that means is at the end of, the, of your forbearance period, some lenders could expect a lump sum. Some lenders may work with you to put it in, and, and re-amortize that over the life of your loan, and some may allow you to do a catch-up program. Here's the thing is that all lenders are not required to participate in the forbearance program. Most government-backed loans and government-backed agencies, they have to participate in the forbearance program. But a lot of private lenders, they do not have to participate in this. They do not have to give you a forbearance. They can actually start the eviction process. So it's important that people educate themselves to understand exactly what kind of forbearance program they are in, if in fact they are in a forbearance program. But even if you are in a forbearance program, you can still qualify for the mortgage assistance funds. And again, that's up to $4,800. So we'll go more into the program and the application process. So the application process can be done right here online. And what the grant assistance is, again, is that there's two basic components of the mortgage piece. So if, let's say you fell behind in your mortgage payments March, April, or May, June, and now you have been restored your income. But let's say you still have not gotten caught up on your mortgage, but your income has been reinstated. You maybe once were drawing some unemployment benefits, but now you are not. Then there's a reinstatement that can bring you current in your delinquent mortgage. So it's a one-time payment that you can qualify up for up to $4,800. But for those homeowners who are still un unemployed or underemployed due to COVID-19, and what underemployed means is that maybe a portion of your income has been restored but you still are at a loss of 20 or more percent of your income due to COVID-19. So what the mortgage payment assistance does is gives you up to $4,800 in mortgage payment assistance and counseling assistance as well. And the counseling assistance is absolutely free if the certified homeownership advisor that you're working with deems that you would benefit from homeownership counseling. So let's talk about what the eligibility requirements are so people fully understand what the eligibility requirements are. So again, you must have experienced a COVID-19 related involuntary financial hardship resulting in reduced income. Now that can be due to a change in employment, that can be due to a medical hardship, a death of a spouse or a COBAR, or even a medical hardship of a spouse if that spouse is listed on the mortgage or has contributed to the income in your household that has resulted in a 20% or more loss due to COVID-19. Or you've received unemployment benefits after March 1st due to COVID-19, or you're currently receiving unemployment benefits at the time of the application that you do it to COVID-19. Again, you must be residing in the home. This is so critical. So this is not for a landlord. This is not for someone who is renting their home to someone. You must be residing 
in the home, you must be residing in Cobb County, and this cannot be your second home. This must be your primary residence as of March 1st. The homeownership application, so the person who, the, the homeowner that's actually on the application must be named on the deed of trust and or warranty deed. This is the document that you get at your closing, and for many people, let's say you filed that document away and you have not been able to find it. You can actually go on the county's website to get a copy of your warranty deed, and it just needs to show. This is just where we show that the person who's actually applying for the funds are actually someone who's listed on the deed, on the mortgage, so that we can ensure that you are actually the homeowner that's applying for it. You cannot be in an active bankruptcy. And the reason for this is, is that the way that most bankruptcy plans are structured, you have to deal with your bankruptcy offer as it relates to any funds that you get because that could adjust your payments up and or down. And once your property is in a bankruptcy, has been included in a bankruptcy, there are certain laws that protect you. And that is something that you need to speak with your bankruptcy officer on. So you cannot be in an active bankruptcy. You must, the homeowner cannot have cash in the bank in accounts, cash on hands. This is excluding any retirement or 401k accounts that is three times more than your monthly mortgage payment. So if you have a mortgage payment that is $1,500 a month, you can't have more than $4,500 a month cash in your accounts uh, to qualify for this program. Now, your adjusted gross income, many people know this as your AGI, and that is the income that you will see after your deductions that you will find on your tax return. So the, there is an income cap to qualify for this program. If you are single, it is $69,439 or less for an individual. If you are a joint applicant, a joint uh, co-owner in the loan on the mortgage, it is 94,672 or less for joint applicants, okay? And you can locate your adjusted gross income, your AGI on your form 1040 of your individual tax return. This is important because some people may look at their W-2s or look at their check stubs and say, hey, I don't qualify because I make too much money. And, but this is it's the AGI that we're looking at. So this is why we will ask for a copy of your tax returns. The homeowner must provide documentation to support the above. So there's two parts of this application process, and we'll go through this. The first part is the intake, and that's where you go and you fill out the information, your form, the, uh, your information, the, the, your, your property address. And then the second part of this is where you actually have to submit the documentation of all the above so that we can warrant that what you're basically telling us is that you certify it and then we will then con consider your application to be fully submitted at that time. So that is to include, but not limited to the following, which is proof of unemployment that shows the impact, your financial impact from COVID-19. Uh, you must show proof of impact for COVID-19, uh, potentially up to two years most uh, of your year's tax returns. Now, the certified advisor may not ask you for this because, again, this is uh, generally for people who may have, who are independent contractors, who may own their own business. Or if you don't qualify per your W-2s, you may qualify per your AGI. So we can ask for up to two years of your tax return. You must show us a current mortgage statement that shows that you are delinquent or have been delinquent. Uh, a copy of your deed two months bank statements with all pages and then all the documentation will be required at the time that the it may not be it's not required at the time you submit your application but it will be required before the application can be approved so let's talk about it's a three-step process in terms of how you apply one you fill out the in, the application intake form and uh, we'll click here a little later in terms of uh, to show you what that looks like and that'll link you to the application form and then this form must be submitted before you attempt to send any documents. This is kind of when we look at your application so that before you start to submit any documents, we can at least, the application will opt you out based on the answers to your question that you submit. So if you don't qualify based on, say for example, if you do not live in Cobb County and you apply for this application, it's gonna opt you out and not allow you to go any further. Once you submit your application or your intake form, then uh, you will get it, you will receive an email within 24 hours to let you know that there that your application has in fact been received and then you can submit your documents based on the instructions that will be given to you in your email when it, once it's sent to you. 
Step three is when you submit your supporting documents within 48 hours. And we really ask that you adhere to, to the 48 hour limit is because this is a first come, first serve basis. So what this means is, is that you could fill out your application initially on a Monday and someone else fills out their application on Friday and if they submit their documents over the weekend or the following Monday and it's been over a week and you still have not submitted your documentation, they actually go ahead of the line from you basically because they have a fully submitted application. Your application is not fully submitted until you submit the supporting documentation. And again, that list is here. It's a copy of the deed and most recent mortgage statement, proof of reduction of income, which it includes pay stubs, copy of unemployment benefits, copy of your most recent utility bill. This is to show that this is your primary residence and it has to match the property or address that is on your mortgage statement. Copy of your two most uh, personal tax returns with all the schedules. Copy of W-2s and 1099 for both the homeowner if jointly owned. And then a copy of your two most recent months of bank statements, all pages. Once that again has been submitted, then, then we'll get back to you within generally, once you submit your documents, you should receive a response within seven days after submitting all your documents. So we'll go through the click here to apply. Before, let's, let's, let's talk about, again, some of the most frequently asked questions, if that's, if that's appropriate at this time. So does any money paid towards my mortgage have to be repaid? Again, this money does not have to be repaid. If you just simply click that, it'll give you all the answers on the website. This program is free. It has been funded by the CARES Act. And thanks, thank you so much for the county commissioners who saw that this is something that's important for homeowners and as well as those who are renting, that they swiftly funded this program. And so all funds are strictly limited for those who are impacted by COVID-19. What happens if I can't find my W-2s, 1099, or pay stubs? You could visit the IRS website at, at, at irs.gov to get a copy of your wage transcripts for your W-2s and or your tax transcripts. You can also contact your HR department. Most HR departments will have a copy of your pay stubs and or your W-2s or 1099s from your independent contractor if you're independently employed. Can I apply for the grant on behalf of someone else? No, grants are strictly for the homeowner residing in the home as their primary residence. Can I, how can I locate a copy of my deed? So I spoke about this a little earlier. So if you are unable to locate a copy of your deed in your closing documents, simply go to this website, research.cobsuperiorcourtclerk.com and you can find a copy of your deed and you can just simply download it, save it, or print it off right there directly from the website. What utility bills are acceptable? So it has to be a utility bill, gas, electric, or water bill. A cell phone bill does not qualify for a utility bill in this instance. So it has to be a bill that is in connection with your property and that would be gas electric or water bill and it has to show the mailing address and the service address so what that means is your mailing address could be a post office box but the services address is what we're looking for to ensure that the service address matches the property address can i submit my documents as i get them no now this is important because what we don't want to do, we really want to expedite your application for you. So to, to, to simplify this, to speed up the review process, because it slows down our uh, processors when they're looking through your file and then it's still missing two documents. So then they have to move on to the next applicant. So all required documents should be submitted at the same time after completing the grant application online and receiving acknowledge of receipt. If you did not receive acknowledge of receipt, what that simply means is, is that you probably gave, uh, made a mistake when you entered your email. So then I would go back into the program, I mean, and back into the application link and actually fill that back out again, or you can send an email and I'll give you the address here shortly. What if I have not 
uh, filed my taxes? What else can be submitted? So if you've not filed your 2019 taxes, that's okay. Then you'll need to provide proof that an extension has been filed or proof that they do not have to be filed for, say, someone who is no longer employed and they're on assistance, an elderly uh, person uh, who does not uh, have to necessarily apply, uh, 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 file their taxes. So there will be instances where tax returns may not be required. Are businesses or landlords that own the property eligible? No. But if you have someone that's renting your property and you feel that they would qualify for this program, by all means, you should recommend that they, as a tenant of yours, should in fact apply for this program. What if I've gone back to work but I currently behind? Can I still apply? Yes, you can. So as long as that the hardship period was due to COVID-19 and it happened after March 1st, even though you have gone back to work, if you still need assistance in getting your mortgage caught up, then you still should apply. What if I lost my job prior to March 1st or was delinquent prior to March 1st? Unfortunately, the CARES Act funding is strictly for COVID-19. And March 1st is the date that the government and the CARES Act has deemed to be the date to, uh, that, that people uh, are being able to say that they were impacted. So. If you were late on your mortgage in January, February, December, and November from last year, these funds cannot be utilized for any uh, back payments or money that is due prior to March 1st. What happens if the money runs out? Again, unfortunately, this is a COVID-19 program funded by the CARES Act, and funding is likely to run out. So that's why it is imperative that you apply you apply as soon as you can, and most importantly, you submit all of your documentation because this money is a first come, first serve basis. What if I think some of the documentation you've requested? Unfortunately, your application, again, will not be reviewed and will not be considered as fully submitted until all documentation is received. This is critically important because some people who have not heard from the, uh, uh, from the HOP, COP Home Savers Program, it's because we are missing documents from you and it's critical that you get those documents into us. What if I don't get an email reply or response? Is there a number to call? Yes, you can dial this toll free number directly, which is 855 and, it's the, and, and it is listed on the site, 493-4002 or by sending an email to cobhomesaver at homefreeusa.org. A question that's always asked to us is, if I am approved, will the money be sent directly to me? The answer is no. Any funds dispersed under this grant program will be made directly to your lender on the behalf of you, the homeowner. Now, you will be included as a part of the process because we will, you will give us permission to contact your lender and your lender will certify that these are the months that you are behind delinquent uh, and that we have all the information correct and then we will actually submit the funds directly to the lender and the lender will provide both you and home free a copy that the money has been posted to your account um, let's go back up to the rental side before because the application process is pretty this much the same um, Let's go back to the beginning. Back yep. Great. So let's say you are a renter. Let's click the renter side of this. Okay, here we go. So again, uh, thanks to the uh, county commissioners, $1.8 million was allocated in emergency funding to provide Cobb um, residents relief funds for those who are renting. Again, these are those, for, so if you are renting a home, if you are renting an apartment, if you are renting a town home, then again, you can qualify for up to $4,800 to pay any outstanding uh, rent that is due that of course was caused by COVID-19. Now, here's what's a little different about the renter's side of this is that your landlord must agree to participate in this program so they must sign an agreement and this is really to protect the renter because basically the landlord if you are awarded and you approve this grant before funds can be dispersed your landlord must agree and certify that they are not going to evict you for the period that you are being paid for not you are being paid for but that, but that your rent is being paid for so the landlord must agree to waive all late fees the landlord must agree to uh, 
waive any penalties. So this is really for your protection so that the landlord doesn't collect the funds and then continue to proceed with any eviction process. So this is to uh, really protect you and is to also certify that the information that you provide to us does in fact agree with your landlord's records. So the landlord will have to provide your rent ledger or rental history, which can also be a copy of canceled checks if your landlord does not have a rent ledger. Uh, and again, must forbear any eviction proceedings if applicable and must dismiss any pending p dispossessory case that's currently against you for the period. Again, this is for the period being covered by the grant. So for example, if the period that is in question is June, July, and August, and your grant covers your rent for that, por that, that period of time, and then if November, December, and or January comes around, and based on what the federal uh, guidelines are going to happen with the moratorium on, on, on rentals, you could still go through an eviction process. This does not mean that the landlord agrees to not hold up the terms of your lease. This is only for the period that the grant is being paid for and, and covering this. That's important that you fully understand that. So again, these are rental assistance grants, and these are, if you're renting a home, if you are renting an apartment, renting a town home, you will still be able to qualify for up to $4,800. The eligibility requirements here are similar, um, but a little more streamlined. Again, you must have experienced a COVID-19 related involuntary financial hardship, uh, resulting in a reduction of income of 20% or more. You must be resided, the applicant must be residing in a rental property located in Cobb County on or after March 1st. Again, the cash on hands cannot exceed three times the monthly rent. This does exclude any retirement or 401k accounts, IRAs as well. Applicants, your gross income cannot exceed for individuals who are listed on the rent, on the lease, 69,439, and then for joint applicants, 94,672. Uh, again, you must provide all the documentation of the above, proof of unemployment, proof of financial hardship, uh, income, two months of bank statements. And again, your application will not be fully submitted and reviewed until you have provided all documentation. So again, this is the step-by-step -step process. Step one, same thing, you fill out the grant application intake form. You will receive an email of the knowledge of receipt. That's important that you have that email. And then you must submit your documentation within 48 hours. That includes a signed copy of your lease with your signature pages, any modifications as well to that lease if it has already been modified, proof of your reduction in income, which includes pay stubs, copy of unemployment benefits, copy of most recent utility bill with renter's name and matching property address, your two most recent bank statements, copy of W-2s and 1099s for all renters listed on the lease. Again, if this is a joint lease and there are even three people listed on the lease, then all three individuals will have to apply and submit their documentation and a copy of the rent ledger and proof of your rental history. So let's go through kind of how the process goes to apply. So once you click apply for both either the rental side or the home ownership side, it's going to get you to, before you continue, to actually confirm that you are eligible. So although we went through this entire list of process that, that you have to uh, ensure that uh, you, you, you are eligible for, it gives you a reminder before you click the click here to proceed to application and it gives you the full list of what you have to do. And then once you click application, it just basically begins to take you through a series of questions. You enter your name, you enter your address, uh, are you a renter in Cobb County? On the home ownership side, it's going to say, are you a homeowner in Cobb County? Have you been renting since March 1st? Have you experienced an involuntary reduction of income? And then excluding 401ks of retirement, do you and the co-borrower have cash and savings that exceeds three times your monthly rent payment? This is the piece that you have to add, and based on your responses to this, it will opt you out to being able to go any further, and you'll get an error message. Say if you click the button that says, I am not a renter in Cobb. So if for any reason you felt as though you clicked a wrong button due to an error, then you should go out of the uh, uh, site and then come back in and start your application process again. It's critical that your name is correct, your email address is correct, because in this stage, this is how we will primarily 
be in contact with you. And then you just continue to click the next buttons and then it will take you through the rest of the application. Once you finish filling out your information, you can just simply click the submit button. All right, thank you, Ernest. Go ahead and take your uh, seat back okay. in the uh, hot seat and we'll get to some of the uh, questions that have been coming in. I did get one question that was really about something Judge Murphy uh, had said during his uh, uh, presentation. It had to do with the uh, CDC uh, order uh, declaration to invoke uh, CDC protections. The question was, do all members of the House need to find indiv sign individual letters of this form that are adults or can they all sign one form together? Uh, I'd like to maybe try to mimic the judge's voice when I answer this, but he, uh, he did reply to me that each adult needs to provide a separate form because it is a sworn statement affirming that the signer meets all five requirements for protection under that CDC order. So the answer to the uh, question uh, for the judge was that everybody's got to sign their own form to seek those CDC protections. Um, a bunch of questions have come in that you've already answered, but I want to get both of you just to kind of reiterate, I think some of the big points in this is that again, it seems like you're, you're filling out a loan application, but this is not what this is, right Margie? Correct, it is not a loan application, it's an application for rental assistance. Right, and um, can you explain, you, you have rental assistance, you have rental assistance, how yeah. do the two programs work together or separately? That makes any sense. So they were separate in that, and then Margie can uh, uh, um, explain a little bit more about her program. We, if you are renting an apartment, a, a condo, a home, you can still qualify with us. So the, the basic criteria is that you must be residing in Cobb County, whether you are a homeowner in Cobb County or you're renting in Cobb County, then you can qualify for this program, assuming that you've uh, incurred some type of hardship due to COVID-19. And I think that's the key in Cobb County. In yes. Cobb County. Yeah. And, um, um, you know, can you, do you want to expound, expand on his answer at all? Or? And then, no, basically, it's you have to have a COVID related hardship. You have to live in Cobb County. You have to owe rent. Um, and you have to prove that you owe rent. And I think uh, you have to have your landlord involved if you go into the rental program for either one of us. We work directly with landlords. Um, so, basically, very similar. Speaking of which, I got one question that you may understand more than I do, but it says, our properties are signed up for Star C. Is this the same program? Yes, it is the same program. The okay. Star C program, yes. And when they say properties signed up for Star C, what, what are they referring to? That, what that means is the landlord has qualified. So once the landlord is qualified, if you live in an apartment community, Stratford Ridge is a, a great example. Stratford Ridge Apartments on Duck Road is qualified. So if you live there, all you have to do is submit an application to your landlord and with proof of COVID hardship, fill out the application. And as Ernst said, you have to fill out your paperwork correctly because if your paperwork's not filled out correctly, we will not approve the application. But all I have to do is fill out the application from our website, attach the COVID hardship, give it to your landlord or the property manager, and then they f attach your ledger, sign it, and send it in. So it's not as much paperwork in our program as Ernst because we are working directly with the landlord who already has this information and they sign off on it. So I got a couple of questions that were along the same vein that you can tell the tenant may not have a lovely relationship with the landlord and may not want to deal with the landlord. What, what advice, if any, do you have for those folks? Well, you need to deal with your landlord because that's how our program works. Or if you don't want to, I mean, even if you work with Ernst's program, you still have to get your landlord to sign off. So, but no, you, you need to make nice with your landlord. Ernest, you, you uh, described this very well in your presentation, but, uh, but uh, probably a third of these questions have to do with kind of the the same theme. Uh, how do I tell if I've been impacted enough by COVID to qualify for these programs? Does that make sense? Absolutely. There's a lot of people that are, are facing difficulties, but is that a COVID-related difficulty? So that's a very good question. And the, and, the, and the rule of thumb is this. If you've suffered some type of financial hardship, because this program is to help those who've been financially impacted due to COVID-19. So obviously, if you've been financially impacted and you've suffered a loss of 20% or more of your income that has impacted you, then you can qualify for this program if you've been on unemployment benefits as a result of COVID-19. So if your employer has had to scale back their staff, if your employer has unfortunately closed the business, 
if the employer has had to lay you off, if the employer has had to just reduce the staffing, and now you've drawn unemployment benefits, then you probably qualify for this program. Assuming that you don't have boatloads of cash in the account, because obviously this program is to help those who are in need. This is a need-driven program. So ideally, if you're someone, let's say, and you've had a 20% or more reduction in pay, and you have $40,000 sitting in a savings account, then that means you probably can weather this storm. Ideally, these funds are allocated for those who really have no other options. They don't have uh, an exorbitant amount of money in their savings account and their checking accounts and they're just trying to figure this out how they're going to navigate through this storm so this program is really uh, a set for people to keep them in their homes to keep them in, in whether they're renting or whether they are owning and it's just to really help them through this process I have another interesting question here um, that it comes from somebody who owns some homes and, and couple that they're renting out in one they have a tenant who's not paying rent and, ha and when asked to pay rent, simply says there's a CDC eviction moratorium, so I'm not paying rent. And they're wondering, as the homeowner, if they can somehow take advantage of the program. Well, for the Cobb Home Saver piece, they, as the landlord, cannot take advantage of the program. They can communicate. They can communicate with their tenant and give them the website address and say, hey, uh, this is the website you should go to. You should apply for this program. It's free. It's up to $4,800. And you should try to make every reasonable effort to work with your landlord and communicate with your landlord. This is not the time to not be returning the phone calls or avoiding calls from either your landlord or your uh, mortgage provider. It's important that you communicate with them because most landlords and many landlords and then certainly mortgage companies are more prone to working with you when they at least can have a conversation with you. So again, it's not for landlords, but if you can certainly recommend this to your tenant. And I think as we heard the judge say earlier that, you know, the day of reckoning is going to come sooner or later mm -hmm. and that the law says you still must be making an effort to pay rent. Um, so that, that goes kind of along with what you just said. Here's a quick question from someone that you both really have touched on, but I'll ask, uh, I'll ask you anyway. S a short question, how long will this process take, RG? So our process can take just a few days. Again, if you download the application, submit it to your landlord, and give it to the proper documentation, let me qualify, the proper documentation and the completed application, as long as it's submitted by Thursday, close of business, um, it'll be approved or go through our approving process by Monday and then we cut checks on Wednesday to landlords. So it can take as little as a week from the application to the time that your landlord actually receives a check. How about you? So it's a little different with uh, Cobb Home Server because unlike Marjorie's program, we do not have program uh, relationship already worked out with the landlords and there are a number of different mortgage companies so we have to start from the beginning of the process and, and with the collection of the documents so the clock really starts from the time you submit all of your documents in terms of how long it takes for the turnaround so once you submit all of your documents you're looking at about a seven day turnaround for a certified advisor to get back with you to let you know whether or not you have been approved for the program and then it's probably another 14 to 21 days before we will actually access the funds and then submit them to your lender now your lender with most lenders if you own a home it, it could take them up to a week or two to actually post the credit to your account different lenders have posting criteria in terms of how fast it takes for the funds to actually credit the account but as it relates to with renters it would be faster obviously because we'd be dealing directly with your with the landlord once we submit the um, requisition to the county and then then we are funded then we will then fund to your landlord so that process from approval could take about 14 days this question I only partially understand but maybe <laughs> you will understand it there's concern that they're self-employed they don't have business bank accounts or 1099s or w-2s and I think they're concerned whether they'll have all the documents needed to fill out the, the application so is this for the renters or this is for the mortgage well, it doesn't specify I'm assuming I, I kind of assumed um, the mortgage but I'm not sure so what's interesting about this process is it's really is especially those who are gig workers independent contractor uh, business owners what this process is really emphasized is the importance of good record-keeping uh, this may not be a time that you want to hear this <laughs> 
but those, uh, but record keeping, good record keeping should be a part of your normal due diligence process of running any business, even your side hustle, side gig, uh, as an independent contractor, obviously because you want to be able to file returns on time and then there are certain deductions that you can get and all those things you can obviously talk to your accountant or tax preparer about. But if, but, but you still have to submit these documentations. So again, if you do not have your W-2s, or your um, uh, uh, pay stubs, then you can contact your HR department if you are employed by a company. And even if it's a company that you are not currently employed currently at the time of applying, most HR departments will comply with giving you a copy of your pay stubs and or W-2s or 1099s. And then you can also, again, go on irs.gov and get your uh, uh, tax filing history and the transcripts of your returns. But it's critical that you gather these documents um, if you do not have a pay stub, then maybe you can pull more uh, months of your bank statements, and then you can always go online and get copies of your checks. Uh, most bank, most 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 uh, banking institutions would allow you to go online and get up to two years, in some cases, of copies of your checks, uh, copies of your bank statements. Uh, the, the, the really the burden of proof is on the applicant, and it's important that you submit the documentation, and that's important for us to keep this process fair to all that apply. I've got one, uh, uh, actually a couple questions along the same vein, where people are clearly str struggling, but they haven't missed any payments yet. They're, they're up, on, up to date on their payments, but they're worried in a couple of months that may not be the case. Are they in any way eligible? So that's a good question. We, we, we have had this, and, and Marge, you may be a little different uh, on this. So in some cases, there have been some people that's what we call uh, and many people may have heard this phrase, robbing from Peter to pay Paul, which is uh, basically you're having to juggle each month to decide which bill you're going to pay because you have been negatively impacted. So let's say you have in fact paid your mortgage because you want to make sure that you continue to have a place to stay, but you have not paid other, other bills. So in this case, we will look at you on, on a case-by-case -case basis. And if you can still show that there was some hardship, and let's say there was a $500 a month shortfall in the income from what you're currently receiving now as opposed to what you used to receive prior to COVID-19, then this grant can still cover up to $4,800 of the shortfall. So it's not automatic that you get the $4,800, but if you have gone ahead and then paid your mortgage, but you can still demonstrate where you've still been suffering and have not been able to pay your previous bills, not newly incurred bills, obviously. So again, this is a case-by-case -case process where you and the certified counselor will probably work a little deeper into your situation to, uh, to ensure that you, in fact, still qualify for the program, but you still should apply. So Marjorie, if I live in a Star C apartment complex, I've sold my car to keep my rent up to date, can I still get help? Absolutely. Uh, just apply through your landlord, as we said earlier. Um, if you are having problems, let's say, paying October rent, that's coming up, I would encourage you to apply and try to get help with your October rent. Okay, I got one for, I think, Ernest, this is for your website. The application for the home renter's assistance only has a borrower and co-borrower signing area. However, there are three people on our lease. Uh, what will the third adult need to do to fill out the form? So what the third adult will need to do is to file a separate application. If there are three people on the lease, and then you would need to call that number that is on the website, the 855 number, or, and you can send an email and then let, and let us know that you are filing jointly. And we'll find that out once you submit your documents, because when the uh, uh, certified counselor will talk to you, that's when you can disclose there is another uh, application. That application should be joined with this file, and the information that's being submitted is, is, is based on this property address. And we'll recognize that once we notice the property address is the same. You said your program's only been going for a month or so. Uh, but what kind of stories are you hearing? What kind of um, uh, impact have you been seeing through the applications that have come in so far? What's interesting is that the rental side of this program only launched a little over a week ago, and we've already received over 1,200 applications in a week. Um, for the homeownership piece, we received a little over 1,000 applications. That's been, and that program has been uh, in play for a month now. Uh, the kind of stories that we're hearing is that people are really happy to know that there's an organization that can work alongside them to really help them navigate this process because 
The whole home ownership buying process can be uh, difficult for some. Uh, you may recall you're signing a ton of documents at that table, and basically the documents say if you don't pay, you can't stay. Um, and there's a lot of language in there that's different, that can differ based on the mortgage. So uh, what we're hearing is that homeowners feel like they at least have an, an, an advocate to work on their behalf. Uh, who can help them with their mortgage lender and can help answer some questions because in many cases especially when COVID-19 initially hit a lot of lenders were not answering their phones so or if, they, if you did were able to get your lender on the phone you may be on hold for four hours <laughs> and then your call gets dropped and then you have to start the whole process over again so what we're hearing um, is really people being appreciative mm -hmm. to the commissioners of Cobb who I must say stepped up very expediently mm -hmm. um, to make sure that the residents of Cobb were um, able to participate in this program. And I uh, mind you, a lot of counties do not have these programs. Right. And Margie, you, your programs have been going a bit longer. What, what kind of picture have you seen painted by the applications and the stories that have been coming in? Well, I think uh, foremost is that there is a lot of people out there that have been struggling. Um, I think COVID is hopefully a once in a lifetime situation. Hopefully this will be over quicker than we all expected. Um, but a lot of the tenants that we are working with are, are just grateful. I mean, they're really grateful. Um, in the last couple of weeks, I've noticed a lot of people calling in are now telling us they're back at work, which is encouraging for us, but they still owe, you know, maybe July and August rent or August, September, and they just need help getting over this hump so they can just move on and get the stress of, of not being able to pay the rent behind them. Um, but basically, I would say the same thing that Ernst is saying is people are just so very grateful. And, um, you know, people are really trying hard to pay their bills and, and get back to work, but we're really seeing a turn in people in our program that are, that are going back to work, and that's exciting. One question came in from one of our remote sites uh, where we're streaming this today. If the homeowner is already in pre-foreclosure, the lender may not be willing to accept any partial payment. Uh, is there a chance you can work with the lender in those cases? In, in that case, um, it is a case-by-case -case basis, and it is based on the lender. So at that point, the applicant should still apply. Uh, they should let us know that they're in a pre-foreclosure, and uh, when we contact the lender on their behalf, then it's up to the lender ultimately whether they choose to accept the money and this is the reason why we ask for a few more documents because with some lenders partial payment constitutes uh, not full payment but they have to stop any process in terms of foreclosure and a lot of lenders unfortunately the private lenders they don't want to work with a lot of homeowners but homeowners have rights and, and, and it's not the lenders responsibility they should let each homeowner know what their rights are but it's unfortunate that we live in a time that a lot of lenders aren't even certain of all the rights that were signed and and and, and, it, and it may be a situation of where a lender bought the loan from a from a previous lender so those loans that get bought from new lenders they're not reading all the documentation to see what was actually signed they know what your rate is they know what your term is and that's really what they want to hold you by so it's important to not just take a lender's word in terms of what your rights are. This is the time that you pull out your documents, you read through your documents, and, um, and you must get everything in writing. So if your lender agrees, this is critical, if you have a verbal conversation with a lender, and the lender says, okay, since, you have, um, you, since you've applied for funds uh, or grant, then we will, dis we will stop or pause this process, get that in writing. Because you could be talking with a representative who's not communicating to the folks below them or above them and unfortunately they don't recall that conversation you should document who you spoke with the date and time of the conversation and by all means get that in writing as you possibly can in some form of email uh, or maybe you send them an email kind of recapping the conversation and then at that point we will go to the lender to ensure that uh, if we're giving them grant funds that part of the process of them accepting these funds is that they will uh, halt any type of foreclosure Margie, I've got one from someone who says that they have uh, applied. Their complex that they live at was uh, late to get si signed up, apparently. And since they've applied, there's been another month that's clicked in where they're behind on their rent. Will you pay for both months now, or do they have to do something else? Uh, well, absolutely, we'll pay both months as long as you're 
under $4,850. So what I would suggest is that you go to your manager and, and submit another application. But yeah, you can submit as many applications as you want over the, as you don't pay rent month by month, as long as you're under $4,850. All right, and I think this is, I'm trying to read through these as we go. Looking at the website, it only has options for rented apartments and extended stay, but which option for Cobb County home renters should I choose to find the correct application? It's a very good question. So Margie's program works with the landlords mm -hmm. only. So you as a renter cannot apply for the program. It has to be a program, if I understand correctly, that the landlord applies on your behalf. So if you are a renter and you, the renter, are applying for this grant, then CobbHomeSaver.org is where you would go to and then click the rent side. So if I'm renting a home, that's where I go? Correct. The rent. If you are renting, that's the key. So when you get to the main landing page, as we call it, it's going to say homeowner, renter. Right. So if you are renting a home, uh, apartment, townhome, if you are renting, that's the rule of thumb just to think about. If you're renting, then you click the rental side. All right, and I'm trying to get through these because they're coming in right now. Um, that one we just answered, and I think there's a lot of, there still is some confusion out there about the fact that they don't have to pay this money back. I mean, I think there's, some people think this is just kicking the can a little bit farther down the road, um, but that's not the case. No, no, you do not need to pay the money back if you qualify with both programs. All right, so let me see what else I got here. Um, once again, uh, there's still time if you want to use the email cares at cobcommunications.org to send us any, um, any questions. What if we do not have utility bills in our name, our landlord covers them in the lease, how much of a problem is that going to be? That could be potentially a problem because most landlords, um, even those who cover water, typically um, electrical, gas, some type of utility is, is going to be covered in your name. But if it's in the landlord's name and the landlord certifies that, and, and obviously that's going to be outlined in your lease. Mm -hmm. So if it's outlined in your lease that your landlord covers your utilities, then obviously you won't have a utility bill in your name. So that's why we ask for a copy of the lease. So if it's outlined in the lease that way, then, then you'd be able to qualify. All right. Um, uh, Margie, if you could repeat the website for those apartments already signed up, uh, people are interested in that. Yeah, just go to www.star-c.org, and if you look up at the top, you can click Participating Landlords. All right, we're going to give just a few more minutes for any questions that come in as we've uh, covered a whole lot of information. If I had to take a pop quiz, I would fail, I think, <laughs> at this point. But the good news is that this will be um, saved for eternity on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page as well, um, and uh, up on our website at uh, CobbCounty.org. So I imagine we're going to get a lot of people that are going to be watching this, not as it's live stream, but in the days ahead. And you can continue to use that CARES at CobbCommunications.org email address to keep sending us questions uh, because um, uh, I, I know they're going to continue to come in. And we'll try to get those answered. We'll just reply to you via email, but continue to use that email to ask questions as we go along. And let me ask you, uh, I'm going to say a few words about the census in just a second, but let me ask you one or two quick things as this program goes along. First of all, Margie, how much money is left in it? Um, we have about a million dollars left in our program from our grant. Okay. And Ernest, you, your, yours has been going not, not quite as long. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Yeah, so as, it, as we're pacing on the rental side, based on the number of applications, this money's going to go much faster. It's, it's going to, um, the number of applicants currently exceed the amount of funding that, that we currently have. On the home ownership side, uh, we're about 50% in terms of pre-allocation. And, and what that pre-allocation means is based on the number of applicants that we have, assuming and they've met the eligibility criteria based on what they've stated on their application. If the documentation support uh, supports exactly what they submitted on their application, then we're about 50% through the funding based on the allocation. One question is, what if you're in forbearance? So if you are in forbearance, you still can qualify for this program. Um, you would need to contact, and, and we would touch base with your lender as well, because you give us consent in the application process, basically for us to also speak with your lender, and just to ensure that this is not going to um, ride any forbearance agreement that you have 
currently in place because what a forbearance agreement is is just simply a pause on your paying your your mortgage at the end of your forbearance agreement this is critically important all lenders aren't the same in their forbearance programs some lenders will require you to pay a lump sum at the end some lenders will allow you to play a uh, to pay catch up on the amount that's been in the forbearance some lenders will uh, allow you to modify your loan and they basically redo a refi and, and refi that balance into your loan. All forbearance programs are not created equal. It's critical that people speak with their lender as to, so what happens after my forbearance program? And if your lender tells you after it's over, you owe us every dime, you need to be thinking about now what your options are going to be and start discussing those options with your lender now. RG, uh, we've talked about needing to have a COVID impact on your life to be eligible for these programs. Uh, somebody wrote in saying that they left their job voluntarily due to COVID because that person has an underlying condition and was concerned about the pandemic. Um, it, so is that good enough, I guess, to qualify? Uh, it is. So as I mentioned, we also have funding that is for non-COVID. It is not from the Cobb CARES Act. So we do take applications for people that do have a non-COVID issue, as long as you fill out the application and work with your landlord. You've already answered this, I know, but I'm going to ask it because somebody's asking the question. And how much time do I have to submit documents once you completed the initial application? We'd like to have your documents within 48 hours of submittal of the application. So the idea is that you can go on site and figure out what the list of documents are. Go, go ahead and have those ready so that once you get your instructions back from your reply, uh, email, then you basically have all your documents ready, and then you can begin to load them up onto the portal. All right. Um, the um, uh, another question that's similar to one that we've already asked and, and been answered, but um, somebody said the pandemic hit. I did not lose my job, but then started having problems with payments. Can I still apply? And again, this goes back to the old thing: COVID must have had some sort of impact on your life. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, it, it, there's got to be, and we've outlined kind of what the proof of that would be. Yes. Um, one, one of the sayings is the sun always sets. So when does the sun set on this program? First Margie years. Well, the sun sets on December 30th for CARES Act funding. So basically we have to have spent, or Cobb County would have had to have spent their money by December 30th. Personally, at the rate that we're accepting applications, we anticipate our money will probably run out in mid to late October. Yep, and Ernest, you said your, yours is a first come, first serve. It is program. a first come, first serve mm -hmm. basis. Um, and if the if if the, if the funds are not depleted, then the actual drop dead date for us as well. It's be, it's because of the CARES Act guidelines. It's December thirtieth. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we anticipate, based on the number of applications and then the rate that we're receiving them, that we will probably be allocated all of this money. It may, it may not necessarily be dispersed by this date, but in terms of we allocate based on the applications that we receive and based on the need. So I would say by the end of October, 1st of November, um, we're probably going to be closing the window on this. All right, so the clock is ticking on both these programs. So uh, if you haven't yet, uh, log on to the websites and uh, start filling out that application. Uh, we're gonna give just a minute or two more for questions, but I wanna say a few words, because I promised I would, about the <laughs> census. The census, um, the sun sets on the census. How's that for a tongue twister? Uh, on September 30th. Uh, and you are being urged to, if you haven't already, uh, to go uh, fill out the form online or when the door uh, is being knocked on by some of those census uh, poll people, answer it and answer their questions because it's very important uh, for not only Cobb County but the state of Georgia to get that uh, uh, as complete of a count as possible because for each individual in Cobb County, for example, that could mean $2,300 in federal assistance coming back to the county. So obviously it's very important. We want that money here, obviously, to do all the good things it can do in Cobb County. There's the website you can go to, 2020census.gov. It took me, I think, less than five minutes That's mm -hmm. to uh, fill out that form when I went on there. It's very important. So again, uh, I didn't know if you, either of you two, I, I want to give you an opportunity for any last words uh, before we sign this thing off tonight. Again, this thing's going to live forever on um, social media and our website. Uh, so people can, can watch it and get all this information out there and then ask any questions that they may, may still have after that. But Margie, once again, uh, this program started a couple of months ago for you, just your impressions of, of it and, and how it's going. Well, first off, I want to thank the Cobb County Commissioners. I think it was really innovative. Um, that was one of the first large grants we got as Star C. 
and we know we've had thousands of phone calls I don't know if you've seen this on Fox 5 News but we've had thousands and thousands of phone calls so we know that there is a big need out there um, we've tried to make our process as simplified as possible um, we are really fortunate um, that we've had so many great landlords working with us and if you have any questions on our website there is a hotline that you can call I encourage you to call I mean I had one tenant that probably called four or five times and we're we're here to answer questions and help you through the process we want to get this money out and we re really want to help families stay in their apartment and keep their children in school again you don't have to have children to qualify for our property or for our program but that's our goal is to stabilize communities by keeping people in their homes so we encourage you to call us or go to our website and work with us and, and again we want to thank the leadership of Cobb County we really do this is wonderful Ernest before I let you do your closing statements in front of the court here no I'm just teasing but um, I did get one question is somebody's worried that they're in bankruptcy if that would affect their application it does you cannot be in an active bankruptcy um, in this program and that is because uh, bankruptcy laws they're written in certain ways and there are different kinds of bankruptcies obviously that um, uh, people file so it, that's something that you have to really contact your bankruptcy officer with and in some cases if a bankruptcy officer gives you permission to apply for a program then we obviously we need to see a copy of that written permission from the courts and and and, and your bankruptcy officer that would give you the permission to apply for this okay. something I'd also like to add is if you are in an active eviction we are actually have representatives in eviction court we have partnered with the magistrate court um, judge Murphy I we can't thank you enough but we've partnered with judge Murphy in the magistrate court we're in court um, we have a representative there so if you're in active eviction court we will be there to meet with you and your landlord and offer assistance if we can be of assistance so uh, Ernest I, you're fairly new to the program you mentioned only a month but I imagine it's been not only exciting but a learning experience for mm -hmm. you as well it has been a great learning experience um, for me and the one thing that I must echo the sentiments of is the leadership of mm -hmm. Cobb County I can tell you that a lot of let me say every county is not necessarily easy to work with and it's important to have elected officials who really represent your voice mm -hmm. and I can truly say that the commissioners here the, the, the county manager uh, I initially went to uh, Commissioner Gambrell about this she brought it forth to the rest of the commissioners and with expediency uh, everyone was really on top of this and I can't say there are a lot of counties that can't say this and I've mm -hmm. spoken to a lot of counties about this and for whatever reason the elected officials either can't find the ability to work together through the process of how it's done but I cannot say enough times just how the leadership in this county cares about the residents of Cobb I can say that because I experienced that and I can say that because of the expediency in which everyone really stepped up to the plate to get this program uh, approved and get this money into the hands of those who need it most and I really have to say I'm proud to be a resident of Cobb well if there's a lesson to be learned from this tonight it's simply to apply uh, <laughs> if you think you can take advantage of these programs apply it is free money essentially it comes from the federal government through the CARES Act specifically for this purpose so please take advantage of it if it will help you in any way get through this uh, pandemic thanks everybody out there for their questions that came that came in you can keep them coming to that uh, cares at cobcommunications.org email address I have the contact information for both these uh, folks they may not like it but I can get in touch with them I can send you send their questions to them to get answered uh, in a timely fashion so time is of the essence so hop on their website apply for the programs and in the meantime thanks for watching this this evening and hopefully we can all get through the uh, pandemic in one in one piece thanks thanks bye